How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. Wrestling. That's what we're going to talk about today. I don't know if you know that. You think you're listening to something else? This is Wrestling Observer Live and a lot to talk about. SmackDown highlights. A new head of the table? A new tribal chief? We're going to talk about that collision last night. You know, I had a uh, just a great afternoon. Just made dinner with my kids. We were hanging out in the yard all day. I got a little tan going now. Eight o'clock comes. I put on collision. It was a fun show to watch. But with that said, there are issues. I love wrestling. So for me, it's a great wrestling show. It reminds me of an old school wrestling show. Boom, boom, boom. You're done. We'll talk about that. Also, Who Killed WCW debuted on Vice. The usual cast of characters, minus a few, were on there. There was no Brian Alvarez. The man that wrote the book, Death of WCW, was not on there. You did have Guy Evans, which Nitro was a pretty good book, which I liked a lot. Uh, we'll talk about that. And, you know, I'm curious. The narrative of this is going to change depending on the episode you're watching. And I, I want to break this down because there's so much to talk about here. Revisionist history playing a part? We'll see. Preview for all the upcoming shows as well. NXT Battleground is tonight from the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. Clash of the Castle. Clash at the Castle? Clash at the Castle? Clash off the Castle. Clash at the Castle. We'll talk about that also. And AEW Forbidden Door coming up in a few weeks. A few more matches were announced also for that. I'm looking forward to the show. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there at the UBS Arena in Long Island. Very easy for me to get there. 10 minutes away. So very exciting stuff. All this and a whole lot more to talk about today. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Early this week, Vice put out a new series. The Rock is producing it. Seven Bucks Production. And it is Who Killed WCW? It's amazing that after, I mean, it's been 20-something years, 23 years at this point. I have to tell you, I remember, and, and you know, this is, this is why this is so cool for me that I do this show. I remember the day I came home, March, what was that, 23rd, 26th, 20, whatever that day was. And I had set up a, a bizarre script. My friend's father was a, you know, computer programmer, and he made a script to launch... The real player at whatever time Dave came on at three o'clock, I think, Eastern, three or, or four, it would launch the player. I also had a timer set on my Iowa boombox that I had connected it to the computer speakers to record it on cassette. I would record the Wrestling Observer every day on a cassette. That, and that's how I would listen. You couldn't, and people are going to say, why didn't you just record it on the computer? How? What kind of storage am I using? I mean, I'm sure there were ways, but I came up with the most convoluted way to do it. But I would sit there and I would listen to it. And I remember that day when WCW was... I remember the day that they announced Eric was buying it in January. But history changes. If you lived it, it was a very different mindset and experience from what we are told today. You know, Eric, I, I, one, one thing, and, I, and I'll bring my producer in for this, right? Do you remember when this news leaked that Eric, uh, that that Vince Russo was going to WCW. Do you remember that? Oh, that vaguely. was a big I deal. Didn't follow it like like you did back then. I yeah. I remember being on the forums and people were acting like this was the greatest move that WCW could have done. Uh, it was going to be devastating to WWE and their writing process because the product was so hot, and he wasn't getting the blame at that point. I mean, rightfully so, wrongfully so. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not presenting it in any way. I'm just saying what the, my experience was like growing up in that era and reading it and seeing it and experiencing it. He was going to be the savior of WCW. And that changed very quickly. It did not happen. And a lot of the people were defending him. They were saying, well, you know, Vince Russo couldn't fix it because look, it was all the backstage politics and the contracts and this. He couldn't do it. But that changed. Again, this is not a defense of Vince Russo. 
or this is not a anything. I'm just I'm giving my experience. It was also Eric Bischoff didn't know how to do it. Uh, it was the networks. Then it became the problem. Then it became the high contracts. And it was Kevin Nash. And it was Hulk Hogan that killed the company. The reality is, it was a collective of catastrophes. It was a collect collective of mismanagement. And this is historic to most promotions that have ever existed, except for one. That's just how it is. AEW is going through the same exact pain right now. It is growing pains. Unfortunately for WCW, the reality is if Ted Turner did not lose power or, or never lost interest in professional wrestling, not that he did, but I'm saying if, he, if, he, if those two were the scenario, WCW would not have closed. It would not have gone away the way that it did or at the time. It comes down to decision makers. You know, you, and, you know, if you really think about it and the way that moves were made, this is a network. That AOL Time Warner, more, Time Warner merger, Time Warner merger, there you go. <laughs> they canceled Buffy. One of the biggest shows on television at the time. And Buffy got picked up somewhere else and he had, you know, it just continued. But it, it, it was a very convoluted time. Who do you think killed WCW? What killed WCW, MJ? You lived it too. And you know what? You watched yeah. more WCW than I did. I was, listen, I'm a Northeast guy. We watch WWF. Yeah. The only reason why I really enjoyed WCW is because my grandmother, when she came to this country, I don't know where she was. I don't know what channel, but she fell in love with Ric Flair. And she would want to watch Ric Flair all the time. She loved Ric. She loved Dusty. And that's what she wanted to watch. So it was in my house. I watched it. But it was always second fiddle to WWF. That is the reality. It always was for me. Great wrestling. Great wrestlers. Fantastic couple years. No longevity. I'm going to ask you again. Who killed WCW? It's a hard question, isn't it? So this whole first episode was setting up for those that didn't needed a refresher. It was Eric. App. It was Eric's story. Yeah, yeah. It was in and, and yeah, and I think I think every episode is going to be from a different perspective. And I Kevin Nash had the yeah, best line right. of it was better. The, Kevin the, Nash's line was better than I Bret Hart's, uh, <laughs> which we can't repeat. Uh, thanks for the, thanks for the money. <laughs> yep, that's all he said. Of... I got paid. <laughs> but yeah, I, you, at the end of the day, it's just going to be, you know, it's it's going to be everybody's story that they told already and in the end day it's going to be everybody killed wcw you know that's how i look at it every everything you just said all those little things added up and uh and at the end of the day it's just led to the demise yeah yeah and you know unfortunate it, it really changed wrestling for you know nearly two decades it changed wrestling that one company going away but i you know you you we we see things differently, right? And I've been I've I've been so into this topic of the death of WCW and who killed WCW. And I read that whole Nitro book by Guy Evans. He's all over it. And I have to tell you, Guy did tremendous work, uh, in 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 his research in his book. He had tremendous interviews. He spoke to executives that had never been spoken to before. Uh, I think he did a very good job with that book, Brian. Uh, that book is legendary. It when he brought when he it first came out. 2004 right i went and i got it and i bought the re-release i thought it was great too these topics uh, i mean the reality is who 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 controlled the money that's who killed it yep. right you could have all the reasons in the world and you could have all the defenses in the world but at the end of the day who was controlling the money and who made that final call and that's who killed it but the series of events right when you put a microscope under it like the finger poke of doom right you could talk about the finger poke of doom uh, it being a terrible mm -hmm. angle. Uh, you could talk about the Hummer, remember? The Hummer, who's in the Hummer we never got the answer to, or whatever, whatever you want to bring <laughs> up. I mean, how much worse was that than Vince being the higher power? If WCW at that time was doing live crucifixions, what would you have said then? Remember, it's a perspective ba balance. 
d for every dumb decision that company made, and they made terrible, stupid decisions, WWF was not too far behind. The reality is WWF had two things that they didn't. Do you know what that was? Three. Three things. Vince McMahon, Steve Austin, and The Rock. You could even go down to two. Steve Austin and The Rock. And they were the hottest things ever in wrestling. And what did WCW have? WCW had Hulk Hogan. But guess what? Guess what the narrative with Hogan was? In 1998, 1999, 2000. He's old. He's washed up. He doesn't let other people get over. He buries talent, creative power. You know, this is all so complicated. I... It bothers me when people root on that WCW failed or any company failed. And this could be true about AEW. If you are a fan of the sport, you want the sport to prosper. Only way you could do that is with competition. And we saw what 20 years of no real competition meant. TNA, never real competition. Nobody, nobody was able to do it. That's the reality. WWE is a juggernaut. They've always been this. They've been this for the last 40, 50 years, and they'll continue to be a juggernaut. And AEW, you know, they're in a very particular situation right now where they are have popularity, but they're number two, and they will continue to be number two. I just think this is a great perspective to have. When we come back, we're going to be talking about contracts coming up. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Two. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. During the break, I got a couple comments here. By the way, hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on X. At Andrew Zarian. You can follow everything I'm doing. I do four wrestling shows a week. You know, I have to tell you, I like that, I like that Sid schedule. I got to play softball in the summer, guys. See you later. I take a couple weeks off here and there. That's fine. I got to live too. I love doing this with you guys, though. Sometimes I gotta, I'm not here, but I'm here most of the time. I got to tell you, man, I, I got a couple comments during the break. They're like, you're so passionate about this WCW stuff. And, you know, I, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I, I my, re, my shoot job is very complicated. And I work with a number of companies and I help them restructure. I help them get out of, uh, corporate disasters, uh, not not nothing heinous, right? I'm, but I, I get hired to help businesses uh, without exposing the companies that work with me because I sign NDAs. Uh, I, I help them kind of figure out where the problem is and what they could do to alleviate those issues and, and kind of go, get back into the right trajectory. I see companies fail all the time. Not because I'm giving them, they're not listening to me. Sometimes I can't help them. Sometimes it's not something I could fix. It just happens. WCW, was it fixable? I would say yes in 1999. But by 2000, that decision was made that it was dead. The brand was dead. You don't think Vince would have done something with it if he thought that there would have been some sort of money he could make? Obviously, he had bias. This was his competition. This was his number one competitor, but he could have done something with it. How are you going to, you know, they'll never be the baby face. I'll tell you that. You bought the heel. You bought the heel company, and now you want to turn a baby face? No, it won't work. You know who did get over in that invasion angle, though, out of all the people? Two people. Rob okay. Van Dam and Booker T. Yep. Those were it, right? That was it. Who else? They didn't want to boo those two. Drawing a blank. Yep. Yeah, they didn't. Even though they're heels, they, they didn't want to be booed. I, I don't know. You know, Vince also made some terrible mistakes, like turning Austin heel and running WCW, and Stephanie McMahon becoming the owner of ECW. Let's remember that too. For all the mistakes that Eric would have made in wrestling, Vince ruined the invasion. See, I'm so passionate about this bothers me i don't know why it bothers me i should write a book andrew zarian's the real reason wcw failed <laughs> stick it to everybody else you hear that brian alvarez <laughs> ricochet 
has informed WWE that he will be leaving when his contract is expired. He informed WWE that he was leaving. This is per PW Insider. This came out Saturday night. Ricochet is not re-signing. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we got that little little uh, clip of Will Ospreay talking about what a mishandling of Will Ospreay, essentially, WWE has done and how Ricochet is one of the best workers out there. Uh, he's not re-signing his contract. It's up later this summer. He would be able to work immediately once the contract ends. So automatically, I'm fantasy booking this, right, in my head. I'm seeing it happen. Will Ospreay wins that title at Wembley, holds it up, and here comes Ricochet. And that's how you leave. That's how the show ends. A face-to-face -face with those two. <laughs> you know what? You used the element of surprise properly. It wasn't, it wasn't you know, oh, you got to tease it. You're going to make money. It's, it's going to be a packed show. It's something you do at the end. And guess what you did? You just sold tickets for Wednesday. Right? Is that not the way to do it? That's the way to do it. That's definitely a way. Don't tell me way, I'm wrong. Actually. Don't tell me you're not I'm wrong. wrong. Okay, thank you're you. You're not wrong. Uh, uh, you know, just, you're reassured. Now, now the story of Ricochet is fascinating, right? Prince Puma in Lucha Underground. He had a great run in 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 in, in New Japan. He comes over to WWE. Hot, hot property, hot act. Goes into NXT, beloved. Goes to the main roster, and guess what happens? Whose fault? I have fault? a question for you. Not his. Yes. I have, the question is, in AEW, do you think he would get lost in the shuffle, though? No, There's a lot I of don't. wrestlers that are very similar to him. I do, not saying, think he will, I do not think he will get lost in the shuffle. I, and, I, and I'm going to explain it to you, and that was the next thing I was going to touch on. Okay. I, I generally am very conservative. When it comes to determining if a talent is going to get over. Like, there are guys that make jump ship, right? And and I'm like, eh, you know what? I don't think it'll work for this. Johnny Gargano is one of those guys. At the time when AEW came up, I said, I don't think it's a good idea for Johnny Gargano to go there. And then, and then the conversation came up again. And I always thought that he would get lost in the shuffle. I thought he was... I, I just... Not because of talent, not because they wouldn't know what to do with him, just because the talent pool was so large, right? Tommaso Ciampa, mm -hmm. you know where he would be? Exactly where Claudio is. Is that lost in the shuffle? Is that, your, you know, that, that depends on how you look at it. There's a number of those people. I don't think Ricochet's one of them. I, I think there's a lot of what could have been with him that exists. You know, this is a guy that has been doing moves that tell that, you know, all those flips, the, all those gymnastic spots, and he's okay. Not really injured, right? He's not a guy that goes away too often with injuries. It's getting older. Yeah. Those knees start going. You know what? A lighter schedule is a pos is a positive for him if that's that's why he wants to go there. I also think he would be able to have some tremendous, you know, matches of extremely high caliber there rather than being subjugated to wrestling, you know, Braun Strowman in, in a 5-minute match. What do you think? You think he get lost in the shuffle? I do a little bit. I mean, there's just a couple of guys that are very similar. Action Andretti comes to mind. Yeah, but you know what? No, and they're not then, as good then, as him. They're then I think Action Andretti is going to get lost in the shuffle. I think when you get an act like him yeah. that mm -hmm. has the discipline he does, and I, I, I don't, I don't think he will get lost. I think he has enough see, recognition, just enough fans that want to see him do well. I, I personally think he would be better going the, uh, the. Cody Rhodes route or the uh, Matt Cardona and just do the indies for a minute and see what surfaces, what bubbles up, and maybe then go. You sign know what? Somewhere. This is. I, I think. I. I think there's going to be money thrown to him. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we we don't just, have too many know. of those available. You know, there's too many of those surprise acts to return uh, to either company right now. It's not happening. I think, depending on how these contracts are going to go for top talent in AEW, WWE may have an advantage, but it depends the next six months and where we go. Also, some other contracts, right? Chad Gable, Dijak, Natalia. Dijak's another one. What could have been? Huge indie name. Great act. Great wrestler. 
They made him into what? What? What did they call him? What was his name? Jack Smash Blade. <sighs> the Retribution stuff. I don't. Yeah. Even what was his name? Uh, 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 Slayer. <laughs> Cut face. <laughs> That's stupid names. <laughs> We've not even gotten close to what the name was. And I'm not what what was it? What was it? Uh, Jax. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> stupid so name. So terrible. Stupid name. Uh, also, Natty, which I think Natalia, Natalia's contract ending uh, is interesting because if there was ever an opportunity, and I don't even know if the timing would work, but for her to be in that Owen Hart tournament, she came out dressed as Owen. She did. I mean, I'm sorry. She came out saying uh, 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 his line, enough is enough and it's time for a change. Yeah, I, do you remember, that was the other day. Yep. I want, I want her to start getting nuttier and just becoming more of an Owen. So like he'll do like the, like the Owen trunks. She'll do, and then she'll eventually do the nation Owen with the, with the caution tape. I want that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I think Natty going to AEW would be huge, okay? It would be great, and I think Tyson Kidd going along as a producer for them also would be a tremendous, tremendous get. Oh, it would be great for the women's women's side of things. Oh, yeah. So he's and, and remember, there is... just does the women's matches. That company has tremendous emphasis put on it, put on that division this year. That women's division, that, that was the plan for them, to rebuild that division. With really top talent. You know, Willow, that match with Willow and uh, uh, Sasha, what, Mercedes? Mercedes. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, man, um, I looked at it with a very critical eye, and I don't like how I judged that match the first time I saw it. I watched it the second time, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I think Willow is tremendous. I think Mercedes is a tremendous wrestler. Uh, she obviously has to get comfortable there. There's some growing pains, obviously, but that's just anywhere you go, anywhere that's new. But adding, you know, with, uh, you know, Jamie coming back, with Mariah May, with Tony Storm, Britt Baker, you have built something good, and Natalia could be a major player there. Chad Gable, Dave Meltzer said, by the way, that there is an offer on the table for at least Chad, for Chad Gable. I think he's hot right now, and I, I, I can't see WWE wanting to let him go. Uh, maybe it's his choice. What does AEW do with a Chad? I think I think Dijak would be a good AEW get. You could do something with him. He's a tremendous talent. You could put him on the collision. You could build something around. You know, there's a lot to do there. ROH. You could do a lot ROH. of things with him there. Ah, yeah. Well, we'll I know. We'll talk it's about a, that. It, that's another story. But Well, yeah. what, what happens with ROH? We don't even know. We have no yeah. idea what they plan on doing there. I actually did get a AEW contract update here, and I'm trying to find it. We'll talk about it in the next break while I uh, while I search for it. Wrestling Observer live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Two. Wrestling Observer live here on Sports Byline. Going to touch on some things on SmackDown. I'm not doing full reviews anymore, and I'll tell you why. Unless it's a pay-per-view review. There's so many people that do a much better job than me doing these reviews. I like to talk about what I like to talk about. I thought SmackDown was interesting. The anointment of Tungaloa into the bloodline. They made Paul Heyman announce that Tama Tonga was the right-hand man and Solo was the new tribal chief. So you are creating the biggest babyface run uh, for Roman Reigns that he's ever had. He's never... Remember, he was a babyface that got booed when they were pushing him. Now you're setting up something incredible. So what is that incredible? Is that incredible? Uh, you know, the Usos and him together? That's what it seems like they're okay. going. Okay, so Usos and him. Then you got Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and Solo, right, on one side. Here comes Dwayne to settle the beef. Maybe he brings in his own guys. What a rub. What a way to get over the other guys. Jacob Fatu. He brings in his own. Yeah, now you have cool. Civil War. You make that your War Games match. You have so much you could do with this. I'm so into this storyline. It is incredibly done. I know it gets stale sometimes, but it picks right up. 
if they're writing this on the fly, if they're just piecing this together, you know, they, obviously they have a plan, but they're just adding more elements to it. Uh, that's unseen. That's unbelievable. If this is something that they've written out and this has always been the plan from the beginning, obviously you pivot when you need to. I would say this is probably the most thought out stories that this company has ever told. A long term story. What else have we had? That's a two year storyline, three year, right? Roman came back 2021. I can't think of something that they've done this long and put this much effort into. No, what we're getting is we're getting nuanced stories, beginning, middles, and ends. When Vince was in charge, you got a beginning and an end. And sometimes those programs ended in one week or yeah, even a yeah, night. Yeah, so, you know, night. so I think that this this feels fresher. You know, even this, look what they're yeah. doing on um, Raw with uh, with uh, Judgment Day and Liv Morgan. They're, that's, that's another story, story that's, that's telling. taking time. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And, it's ta- and it's it's working. I have to tell you, I hate the telenovela stuff, but I'm into this now. I'm into that, the, into what they're doing. I like that that little love triangle they're doing. I, it, it's you know what you put it on, you're watching, you're like, oh wow, right? Oh yeah. You say a word I can't say on the radio. Okay, <laughs> I see they're doing something. You stop. The key is to stop to stop what you're doing and watch. And, and, you know, that 30 seconds or that minute and a half you're, you're, you're engaged, that'll continue on. I think they're doing a great job with both. Uh, Raw is a little harder to watch. That's just how it is. Jade and Bianca defeated Indy and Candice. Uh, this was the good segment here. I, I'm into this. Cody and AJ. Cody was waiting for AJ in the parking lot. And then they started fighting. I like this AJ run. I like heel AJ. I like that there's some bullet club involvement here. You know, they're telling a little bit of that. I'd love to see AJ as champion again. I know he's not going to win. I know Cody's the man. Do you think this has been a, a decent few months for Cody as world champion? I do. I do. He's he's carrying every show. And people, people are going to say, oh, he hasn't had... A, you know, that match he had with AJ, at, what was that, Backlash? Yeah, what, it was a good match. I don't even know. Yeah, it was a, it was fantastic. Um, so, I I I think it's been a, an A so far for me. You mean the Sa- the, the the before the Saudi show, right? Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's been great. LA Knight defeated Carmelo Hayes. That's also a big moment. It's going to be him and Logan Paul, and I think he should be the man to take that title from Paul. I said this in January. You mm-hmm. want to create him, and you want to you want to make that that U.S. title something tremendous. Have a guy like L.A. Knight carry that title. You know, AEW has done an incredible job with the way that they're presenting their world titles right now. I know it's a billion of them, right? They have a billion titles. That forget about that issue. That's a whole separate issue. But everybody that has a title is a top person in that company. You don't have a mid carder holding the title. You're not. What what they're trying to do right now is establish the titles, establish the belts with the man, rather than it being the opposite of, you know, you put the title on a young guy and you hope he gets over because he's walking around with a title belt. Chris Jericho's the FTW title, has the FTW title. Uh, Okada, one of the greatest champions in, in the last, I don't know, two decades, has the Continental title. Will Ospreay, the future of the business has the international title. They, they've strategically placed these, obviously Swerve, you know, the man right now. You, you put these on key people that are established. That's the key here. And I think LA Knight would be great also. Uh, also, to touch on this, you had Kevin Owens and uh, the Street Profits defeating the Bloodline after the show. Members of the Bloodline came out. They probably bumped Owens through the commentary table. And that's continuing between Kevin Owens and the Bloodline now. Collision last night, I enjoyed a lot, but I also see the criticism of what does this lead to? What kind of show is this? Less storytelling, more wrestling, which I love. This is a Andrew's having a couple drinks and he's sitting on his couch and he's watching some really great wrestlers wrestle. FTR Blackpool, Blackpool Combat Club enjoyed this match tremendously. Brandon Cutler came out. They beat him up after they went to a 20 minute draw. 
They're building Chris Statlander. What did you think of her new music? I liked it. I like it. It's highlighting her a lot more. Stokely Hathaway yeah. being uh, yeah. Listen, they're the telling intro. the story between mm-hmm. Willow. Willow arrived to find Chris. Mm-hmm. The, the, you know, the, these are these are all fun moments that you're continuing these mm-hmm. B side stories. Nothing, no, you know, no main stories being told here. It's all the side stories that you're kind of filling in. And you know what? Guess what? That's what the show was going to be before the CM Punk stuff. It was going to be another avenue to get you know some talent to tell something to sh- display some more talent on there. Dustin Rhodes defeated Johnny TV. This was a great promo by Dustin. Kind of alluding to like some sort of retirement, but it was a really good promo. Uh, But it looks like he's going to be feuding with Jack Perry now. Well, we're having a match this week. I don't know. where. I don't know, but they built built something. Maybe it leads to some sort of firing and the EVP start bothering him because of coat. You know, you could, you could do something. There's something to tell there. The premier athletes, Tony Nese and Aria Davari. Uh, it was uh, Trent Jordy and Dante Leon. All right, whatever. <laughs> it was a match. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony Storm that. defeated Lady Frost. Lady Frost looked pretty good here. I, th- I dug this match. It wasn't bad. Uh, and here was interesting. Hook and Samoa Joe were backstage. With allegedly uh, Shibata was there. Joe says, speak and spell that camera ready. Uh, they did the Google Translate. It says yes. Uh, Joe asked Hook if about playing lacrosse. What a weird conversation that was. Because uh, lacrosse is huge on Long Island. And Hook was a lacrosse player. They spoke about that for a little they bit. They just were walking down the hall just casually. And yeah, just having like- a conversation. It just and then and then and then it was like it was gangster style and then just busted in the room. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was that was great. Good job. Main event: uh, Orange Cassidy defeated Kyle O'Reilly. Really good match. Kyle is great. He's so good. But here's what we got: Zack Saber Jr. has challenged Orange Cassidy at Forbidden Door. Yo, I'm into this. I'm going. I'm excited for this show. Don't I have a great card in front of me? So far, it's getting better. It really is. Yo, this is great. Look at this. Ladder match yeah. for the vacant TNT title. Takeshita, Mark Briscoe, and Turnbuckle Dan, as I like to call TBD. AW Women's Champion Tony Storm against Mina. Mariah is going to play a part in this, right? There's going to be something here. Oh, oh! If you remember because of that relationship, the seg- the segment on Dynamite. Where yeah. Mariah was in between both of them. Yeah. Or that definitely um definitely she's this is gonna I think what they're doing, this is leading to uh Mariah May versus Tony Storm at um all in. Yo, that's, that's great. That was I'm part into of the, that. Well, that was part of what they did on the show that uh last night was she said, I'm I'm campaigning to get you in the Owen tournament. Yeah. So I think Mariah takes that tournament. All right, that's cool. I'm into that. Mercedes Monet, TBS champion against the New Japan Women's Strong Champion, Stephanie Vic- Vic- Vicare. Vicor. Sorry for Vicor. Close enough. <laughs> so sorry. So sorry. She's fantastic, too. I like her. She's good. And right now we got Swerve Strickland defending against Will Ospreay. That is the only match I do not want to see right now. <laughs> and I hope they have something creative there because I like both. Neither one should lose. I think this is a great match for the title uh, for another time. N- not And, and the, you know, the international title is not on the line, right? Just the world title. I believe that's what it is. We'll see. NXT tonight. At the Apex, UFC Apex. This is an interesting card. 8 o'clock tonight. Trick Williams defends against Ethan Page. The newly signed WWE talent, Ethan Page. NXT North American Championship, Obafemi defends against Joe Coffey and Wes Lee. NXT Women's Champion, Roxanne Perez against Jordan Grace. This is the match I want to see. I hope Jordan does an unbelievable job. She's so talented. I'm so glad she's getting recognized for this year. Uh, 
Tremendous. I, I like this a lot. North American Women's uh, Championship, the first ever to be crowned in a ladder match. Sol Ruka, Lash Legend, Jada Parker, Fallon Henley, Mitchin, and Kalani Jordan. NXT Underground match, Shayna Baszler, Lola Vice. NXT Tag Titles, Nathan Frazier and Axiom defend against the OC. And Sexy Red will be hosting. I want to sing a song by her, but I can't because I'll get censored. That's that's all I could say, right? Sure. Yeah. Right. That's that's it. That that's the only appropriate part I could say from that song. Just mumble the words. And we got Clash at the Castle coming up next Saturday. When we come back next week, we'll be talking about this, and a lot is going to be set up here next week. Obviously, Cody and AJ in a night quit match. Damian Priest and Drew McIntyre for the title. Bailey against Piper Niven for the women's title. Sami Zayn against Chad. For the IC title, women's tag champions Bianca Belair and Jade, Jade Jade Cargill defends against Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark and Alba Fire and Issa Dawn in a triple threat. A lot going on here. A lot of good wrestling. I love having these pay per views. Almost every single week, there's something going on. Look at this. We got uh, we we were talking about three pay per views in the next I don't know three weeks. Fantastic stuff. When we come back, we got a few more minutes here. Final segment of the show. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show here. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. We also have the G1 coming up. Forgot to bring this up. They're returning back to the 20-man A and B block format, which I like so much better. I didn't like the, what they did last year. Did you like it? Uh, it was more confusing. I think it was better on the wrestlers because they had less matches, but I think it was harder to follow because there was more people that you didn't care about in it, right? More at the yeah. low end. And it meant for some slower, you know, some matches that were maybe not as good. So hopefully this will get back to how it used to be where every match is like you have to watch. You know, at least yeah. the last two matches on every show. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I, I agree. I think... It was evident that they needed to do something, right? They, uh, I, I don't think it went it went as well as they thought last year. And they don't have as many stars on it this year, yeah. right? Because of, you know all the people that are now in AEW with yeah. Osprey and Okada. So I think go, scaling it back a little and, and making it good is what they're going to need. Uh, also, uh, Jeff Cobb, Jeff Cobb has issued an open challenge. Uh, against uh, from Dominion, after the after the interview, after the match, Cobb spoke in the post uh in the post conference and he issued an open challenge. Interesting. It's gonna be a good show. I'm excited to go. It's gonna be a freaking blast. Are you jealous? I think you are. I, I'm I'm pretty jealous actually. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's it's gonna be a great time, guys. That's it for this week. We have a whole lot more to talk about next week. All week next week, I'm going to be doing shows. So if you want to follow me, follow me at Andrew Zarian. Everything wrestling over there. I got a show on Tuesday with Garrett. I got a show uh, Friday with Rich, Matt Men. And of course, next Sunday, we'll be back here on Wrestling Observer Live. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye for now.